One of the things that was brought up during the last community service, and frankly, during several of uh, some major of my uh, Facebook roundup shows that we do every Wednesday uh, from uh, 1430 to 1530, where we answer uh, the community's questions as they're sent in by Facebook, uh, gets to the water. A lot of people very concerned about the uh, billing for water. Uh, just to be clear right now on a couple myths that I want to dispel in this group, and I ask for your help, because I don't have, you know, 12,000 people, 17,000 people in this room right now. So I need word of mouth uh, to get out there and spread uh, the word. But a couple things. First, uh, the water you see spraying on these lawns is not billed to anyone but me, okay? And I don't mean the Taylor household. I mean Garrison Command, okay? So we pay for all water from all sprinklers that are coming built out of the ground uh, with the, uh, and that's a totally different kind of water. It's what we call purple water or uh, gray water. Uh, that is produced on this installation for the, that purpose, okay? It's purple pipe gray water. Uh, so we're, we put less cleaning into those, so I would encourage you not to start drinking out of those. If you decide to shove your head down a sprinkler, you might have a rude awakening. Uh, but second, um, on top of that, the, uh, the faucets that are built into the home, i.e. the spigots that are built into the home that you might put a hose and fill a pool with or fill uh, watering buckets or whatnot. That is built in, okay? Uh, or will be at some point when we actually go fully online for water billing. I'm going to have uh, Carlos talk uh, a little bit about the water billing, much that we, uh, the way we briefed it last month, because I want to make sure we get the word out there. Simply put, the whole point of water billing is to create a more conservation minded, uh, responsible community, because we are in California. Anybody who's Turned on a TV once or twice realizes that California is dealing with a very real problem with drought. Uh, there's not enough water to go around. On top of that, we're in the high desert, and we got some problems with uh, consumption of water here in this community. I'll highlight some of that. But before I get to the uh, the sticker shock slide, I wanted to touch on a couple things. This is the mock billing percentages so far to date uh, for June. Some overall percentages. What you see in the larger portion of the pie. Is 61% of the people in June and 62% in July were right within the median, meaning there was no overage and they had no bill whatsoever, i.e. plus or minus $25, no bill charge. Uh, they are on the average line. Then there was about 18% in the uh, first month and 17% in the second month that were uh, having a uh, credit given to them. They earned a rebate. And that rebate was an average of $42 or $38 given back to those residents, if they were actually billed, that is. Like I said, we haven't gone online. This is mock billing. And then in the month of July, as you can see, uh, or June, July, in the red there, you see those that would have incurred a charge, okay? And so uh, that has been roughly 21% both month uh, with as high as $121 billing. Since we got some folks that are real outliers. I'll let Carlos describe how we do that calculation here in a minute uh, after I cover a couple things, okay? And there's some very serious outliers that uh, I want to describe as well because we've done a lot of research on this and we're going to continue to do this research while we do this mock billing because we've got to educate the community on how this is done. Next slide. The average trends for water billing, uh, you see these start to decline. So you see there on the upper left-hand corner, average consumption is 5,030 gallons per home. Okay? Now, if you're well beneath that, then you're doing okay, and you should see a credit over time. Now, different homes, different sizes. This is an average for over 2,600 homes, okay? And the goal here is to see reduction in that water as we educate the community, as the community sees their mock bill and says, holy cow, I've got to do some fixing here uh, in my habits. And that's what we want to achieve here. On top of that, there's some very real problems with folks not being educated and understanding what ignoring repairs that are to be done will do to their bill and what frankly does to my bill as a garrison commando for this installation, okay? Uh, excessive users on average there are 52 in the month of June, declines to 45 because there are people getting closer and closer to the mean, okay? There are other communities that are doing this. One most notable that's been doing it for eight months is in Monterey up there in Northern California. Okay. They haven't seen exactly what we're hoping to see, which is average usage continues to come down as uh, the community gets more responsible in the use of water. Okay, And it's, it's a proven fact. When you hit people in the pocketbook, 
they start to act more responsibly with water. Okay, I shared last time, uh, my wife had to educate me as I opened the fridge and decided what I wanted to eat, as I ran the faucet for way too long uh, to warm up the water because she was paying the bills. So, but, you know, you get more discipline when, you, uh, when you're paying for it. Next slide. This is the sticker shock on a drive home. In Mojave Village, we had one home whose daily July usage was 972 gallons, daily, okay? 972 gallons. After fixing a leak in a toilet, one toilet that was continuously running, it came down to 167 gallons per day. That's a lot of money. That's over a $1,200 bill that would come to that resident if we were billing, $1,255, okay? We've got to get our community to realize that a running toilet, a continuously running toilet, is a bad thing, okay? Because I'm telling you, the money for that water was still paid for by the, excuse me, by the privatized housing and by the garrison, okay? So right now, that resident didn't have to, didn't have to pay that. But our, our uh, repair guys here don't know that you got a toilet that's continuously running unless somebody calls them and tells them. So we gotta educate our soldiers from Two-star general right on down to brand new private. That if you hear the toilet running, if you have a tap that's continuously dripping or whatnot, you got to tell us because we'll come out and repair it. We would much rather save, you know, twelve hundred dollars in a single home for uh, for a continuously running toilet than spend uh, with probably no less than about you know fifty, sixty dollar repair uh, by coming out and doing the job. But we don't know that's happening. The next one in Sandy Basin, eight hundred and eighty gallons. And this was a tap that was continuously dripping, came out and did the repair. That bottom one in Coyote Springs, 2,000 gallons per day down to 64 gallons. Anyone want to guess how big that bill would have been? $2,784 that would have been billed to the tenant if we were actually doing billing. Now, who here has $2,784 laying around they want to put into water bills? No one. Okay. And we don't want to charge that to y'all, okay? But we don't know that's happening unless you tell us, hey, I've got a continuously running toilet. That was two toilets and a faucet that were continuously running, okay? Two toilets and a faucet that was nearly continuously running, okay? So you gotta tell your, uh, your soldiers, your families, hey, let us know if you have, and we're looking for this. I'm telling you, right now in this modern building, we're looking for things that are outliers, and we're gonna continue to do that. But my, work, my employees in the RCI, as well as the employees that are part of the privatized housing, don't have enough people to sit there and scrutinize 2,648 units on this post. So we need responsible tenants uh, being committed to conservation in the community. Okay. So I want to talk this stick shot real quick. I'm going to let Carlos uh, go through how the building is done one more time for those that are new uh, in here, and then we're going to continue to post this as we have on the village's uh, webpage. Uh, so that folks can download. I encourage everyone to download so you understand how this is happening. We have not committed to a precise date yet to go online for billing, but the plan was three mock billing, July, August, September, three months of mock billing, and then go online in October. Uh, but we've got to work through some of the kinks before we actually implement that, and we'll come to the commanding general for final decision. Okay, Carlos, go ahead. Okay, the slide actually got lost in, in the uh, in the shelf today, but he's going to brief it, and uh, it's on the web page. It's on the postmaster. He's going to stand up there and brief the best way he can. If you have any questions, we can ask afterwards, real quick. But the slide is on postmaster. So with water, I think Garrison Commander made a lot of great points, and I mean what we've seen just in one month is pretty amazing. Uh, the, the reductions from. 60 to 90,000 gallons of water being wasted, being reduced to five or 6,000. I mean, that, that's huge. And that's just water that's just, that, that, that was being uh, basically wasted, you know, when we are in the situations that we are. So uh, it is gonna make a big difference. As far as the, the conservice program, so kind of like, if you want to make sure everybody understands the way that the water building is gonna work, um, it's gonna be pretty much the same method and system that we've been using for electricity and gas. So it's not going to be anything new. Uh, what basically occurs is we have profile groups. And these profile groups are, are, are of like homes. So we want to make sure that we're, that you're being compared to other people that are in similar homes to yours. Same uh, size, same year group, uh, same model. We have, in TFERC we have upstairs and downstairs 
we break that to make sure that all the upstairs uh, homes are being compared against upstairs homes, downstairs homes are being compared down, uh, against downstairs homes. Uh, you're not going to, if you live in an older house, you're not going to be compared against Sandy Basin or New York home. So we do take that into effect. Once you put in all those um, variables, age of the home, size of the home, location, variant type, then we come up with the profile group, and those profile groups is what you're basically competing against. And what you're being compared to is your neighbors um, and their usage. And as long as you're within the average, either you don't pay or if you're below the average, you get a refund. If you go above the average use, that's when you have a bill. The average use is calculated on a monthly basis. So it's, it's not a set baseline, it's a rolling baseline. It's calculated based on use per month by your profile group. That's a good thing because usage changes on season. You know, in the summertime, you, you might want to take more showers. You might want to cool down. Most people are doing the same thing. So it, it's going to be adjusted just like electricity, just like gas. Um, aside from the baseline usage, so right now we are looking at um, at the way that that's been, in fact, we, we took the profile groups recently because of what we're doing, and we reviewed all of the distributions to ensure they're equitable. We made a few adjustments, so that's going to be a good thing that uh, came out of this. Um, once the baseline is determined, you, you'll get the bill. Right now, what we're focusing on, since we are in the pre-building stage, is getting out there and fixing these, uh, these problems. We're actually sending out notices to all of the outliers and we're scheduling appointments to go to your house. So if you get a notice from us, please know what we're trying to do is get ahead of the, uh, of the game and go out and fix the homes before we go into the live building part. So right now, all the high outliers that we're seeing, we're sending out notices, and we've already started. And what we're finding is that a lot of the times, it's something as small as a running toilet. And like the garrison commander said, I don't have any kind of sensor or something that will let me know that something's going on with your home. So unless you actually call us, or, or right now you know, we're scrubbing the list, we would never know. And this, this is what this is really going to do for us, is it's, it's going to put the onus on the resident to give us a call and tell us, hey, something's wrong, so we can go out there and fix it. Um, one of the concerns that came up is, well, what if I do have a running toilet? What if there is something wrong with my house? It's not fair for me to pay you know, an additional amount. Water is going to be just like gas, just like electricity. If there's a maintenance issue, you come in, talk to us, we see what happened, we see when did you call the work order, what was the situation, and everything's done on a case-by-case basis. We're not going to charge anybody for something that wasn't your fault, but you do have the responsibility to call us, and that is going to play a role. When, you know, did you let it run for for a month, for two months? So if, the, the bottom line is if you feel that there's any kind of issue with your home, call us. We'll be more, more than happy to go out there and, 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 and see if there's any kind of issue. Um, Yeah, let me add to that. Uh, bottom line is we don't want to charge people unnecessarily for things, but we can look at the meter rates. And as Carlos just mentioned, if your meter rate went from 64 gallons a day and spiked to 700 gallons a day and went for the better part of two months, we're going to ask you what happened. Okay. Now, if it's a toilet that ran and ran and ran, you may get billed for some of that because you ignored a clear fault that you should be able to detect. If it's a pipe that cracked, underneath the foundation and we have to dig up the ground and there's no way for you to know that because there's no symptom, then we'll absorb that, okay? So we'll make those adjudications on a case-by-case -case basis because that's how we can try to make sure we're still being fair, okay? Go ahead, Carlos. Yeah, is, there, is there any particular questions anybody has on the way that we determine the baselines or? Yeah, go ahead. I have one. Okay, so here's my situation. My sprinkler system in my backyard is, does not work. So, based on the current system, I would be charged for watering my yard. Right. Even though I've brought this up multiple times now to housing about the sprinkler system. So, the irrigation system is not calculated. That's, that's a good point. About no, well, Carlos, what he's talking about is he's running off the spigot off the house. Yeah, so well, in order to, I have, a, I have a choice. I either water my yard or I let the grass die. I got it. We'll take a look at your unit. See me afterwards, okay? But that is definitely something we want to know now so we can address it. Let me know afterwards. Sorry, um, you mentioned that it's based on the age of the home, the style, the size, location. 
Um, do you take into account the family sizes within those units? All right, I was going to say that for when he's done with the billing. I'll come to that. Okay, sorry. Keep going, Carlos. So, uh, with the profile groups, once you, once at the end of the month, it's uh, calculated where you're at and you're compared against everybody else. And basically, up to $25 up or down, uh, you're within the baseline average and you're not going to pay. Uh, we've made it $25 um, either up or down as the grace area. So, if, if you're within that, there is not going to be any bill. You'll see it and it'll carry over the next month. And it's not to hit that threshold that you would actually have a bill or have a refund coming to you. Um, that, that's basically the step from A to a, 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 a Z when it comes to the baseline usage. Uh, the, the big thing, like I said right now, is we're, we're trying to focus on the preventative maintenance and, and getting out there and checking the homes before we get to that point. Issues like that we take very serious and we're going to be uh, definitely looking into those. Uh, okay, thanks Carlos. Hey, again, the slide brief that goes into the weeds of how these are calculated are available on the Village's webpage. It is this kind of service brief. It literally talks you through how you can look at your billing, uh, how it's calculated, what the uh, estimates, how the estimates are done, and so forth. So I encourage you to pull it down. Uh, with regards to your question, Delilah, I was asked last month by Captain Harrison uh, Smith, and uh, here's where we stand now. There is no units uh, throughout the United States Army that provides a dispensation uh, for more people living in a home uh, than what is that home's average occupancy, okay? That is not done anywhere in the Army. I'm trying to do it, okay? Uh, locally here. I've got, I've talked to Michael's Management Services as well as my DPW and we'll take a look at how I can calculate it. So, for instance, we expect you to bathe. We expect you to consume water in the desert, okay? And if, by happenstance, because of the assigning of a number of people to a home, uh, you end up happening based on timing, and you know you want to get in a home, there wasn't a four bedroom available, soldier X decides I'll move into a three bedroom. We generally assume that a three bedroom home is for four people, uh, specifically a, a mom and dad and two children. Uh, if we happen to have six people in that home, what I'm gonna try to do is calculate a way to build in additional usage allowed that is a credit from Garrison to the privatized housing unit because the luxury I have here is I produced all the water as the Garrison command. So I wear two hats, 49% holder in the community, but I also wear the billing hat uh, as the Garrison commander that produces all this water and charges uh, RCI slash MMS uh, the money for the water. And so and then they have to pass it on. And so at this point in time, we don't know what the calculation is before we go online and we'll figure out how we're going to do that, okay? It's different. I view this as different than electricity, okay? We know what is the largest consumer of electricity in your standard home. Those things that are heating units and those things that are cleaning units. You don't have extra fridges just because you happen to have six or four kids instead of two kids. Uh, if you choose to have extra plasma TVs that consume more electricity and gain stations and, and stuff like that, well, that's on you. Just like if downtown, you don't get extra... Uh, credits from the electricity company in Barstow or in Fort Hood, Clean, etc. Uh, it's just not done. But water, we expect you to bathe and to consume water. And so I'm looking at how I can do that thing. Does everyone receive a mock bill or are these randomly sampled people? It is supposed to be everybody. And so, for instance, I have not received mine yet, but we had partial move-ins and partial move-outs, and so it's not calculated. If you did not receive a bill, come and see Carlos and the team and try to figure out why. Okay. Everyone should have received a mock bill for the month of July. And what's the period start and stop? Uh, 15th. Yeah, 15th to 15th, and then you should receive it not later than two weeks from that time period. So, for instance, I moved in on July 16th. Um, in theory, I should see a mock bill for the Taylor household here real soon, and my son will have a rude awakening. First one chance. Any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Just one quick note with the uh, one thing that's kind of been mentioned to us as well the equipment itself. You know, I live in an older house and it takes me, you know, two minutes, three minutes to get the water running. How is that fair? Uh, the, the thing with that is versus compared to a new house where you might just go ahead and turn it on and, and you know, it goes uh, faster. The, that's why we do the profile groups, it's for that very reason. 
uh, your home is being compared to other like homes. And there's a small chance that maybe you might have one or two homes that we have to repair and replace. Um, for the most part, in general, most people are going to have the same age and style of water heater that you would have. So you, that is the whole purpose for that because you're being compared against like homes. And that's really important because that's one topic that kind of recurs quite, quite a bit. Dishwasher, same thing. It's going to be the same style of age except for a few variants that we've got like have to replace over time. Right, any other questions? Yeah, I got one. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Scott. It, a lot of this has to do with just educating the community. Um, so they can report things that will consume a lot of water. When, when a family reports, I don't know, when, when a family reports to housing a, a work order and they think that it is, it is a water wasting thing, is that, is that prioritized differently in the work system? I mean, can, can families and soldiers say, I hear you, I, I got the message, I'm educated, I think my, uh, you know, toilets running or my water heater is so clogged I have to run it for 10 minutes to heat the water. Or it changes the priority in which the work order is serviced? And that's a great question. And the, the answer is really, it, it depends. Um, it depends on what's communicated to the call center, you know, whether we think there's damage or a potential for damage to the home. Obviously, that would be at a higher, um, at a higher level. And it depends on the number of calls that we have for other issues. So if I have 10 calls that are, you know, I have two floods and I have eight HVAC homes. So if I have people with no HVAC that are in a, you know, in a really hot yeah. home. I'm going to prioritize those. Yeah. But yes, we are making them a, 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 a priority, which is why we're. Because I know I know you must get a lot of work orders. I'm just trying to help educate the population. If you have a what you believe is a water wasting work order, when you call in, use code name. Purple line, whatever, so that you know that it's important. It's got to do with water waste. Absolutely, Kevin. We'll add that. We don't have that in that place right now. Good. It's not intuitive. And one of the things we're developing as well, by the way, is a fact sheet, FAQs, uh, for each home. Uh, you know, one of the things MMS has done is they're assigning uh, set employees to set communities, and we're going to develop quirks. You know, when you live in a home for 40 some odd years, you know the quirks of the home. You know where to cut off the water on the toilet and shut it off. That's not intuitive to new occupants necessarily. You know, once you've busted a few lines or you know, ran the toilet, you know that you cut that off uh, at the bottom. We'll add that to it. There's quirks where for some reason in, in somebody's garage you have three different light switches for three different lights and you just don't know. And so uh, there, there are quirks like that that we can, uh, you know, I called in a work order the other because I thought I had a light bulb ballast out, changed the bulb, and it turns out, no, there's a switch hidden on the back wall that I just didn't know. So we're going we're gonna to develop things like that for each of those. But your point is valid. We'll make sure we emphasize our work order desk. Uh, and the folks at the call station at the 1855 number uh, to ask the question, do you have running water? Do you have uh, what we believe is uh, a consumption, uh, unnecessary consumption of water, we'll try to prioritize that. Okay? Maybe you had a question. Well, the question is as far as billing, um, is it true that I apologize, I'm fairly new here, I did about the same time you did, so I'm still doing Are we taking a mean, a mean number and then saying if you are above that, you owe, I know you don't actually have to pay at that time unless it hits that $25 threshold. But are we do those charges carry over? Because what I'm wondering is, there's kind of two ways you can do it in my head, and I'm, you know, do you, is it like you say it, the mean is a thousand gallons for a month? Let's just throw that number out there. And if you say between 1,200 and 800, you're nothing less than 800. You get to repay more than 1,200. Oh, or is it we're just going to look at the total amount and you know, these top, I realize you guys throw out the bottom and, and top 20%, but say with you're in the top 30% or the bottom 30%. My point is, are we creating a system where it's possible that there is a way that nobody can owe if, if they're close enough? I mean, of yes. course, not everybody's going to be exactly the middle. Yes, there okay. we are. Bottom line is, like houses, certain age, as already described by Carlos, we literally could have, if everybody's within that standard deviation, we could have nobody pay. And oh, by the way, 
I showed you the slide for uh, Fort Irwin for June and July. June was mock billing without any, or, or actually just testing, no mock billing at all. July was the first mock billing month. And so that's the first time people got to see that they've been told that it's coming. And we saw that drop from 5,000 average gallon usage to 4,000 average gallon usage. So the word's getting out and people are deciding, yeah, maybe I don't want to run it. So, but yes, it is possible. And if you take a look at Monterey's figures and how they did it over eight months, you saw continuously that number of 52 outliers in overages and uh, something like uh, 38 outliers in unders. Uh, go smaller and smaller and smaller. There were still a few. You know, there's still some people. There's going to be that person that just chooses to ignore it until they get the, you know, three hundred dollar bill. The other thing is that if you take a look at Monterey's figures, nobody has any bills greater than two hundred dollars uh, anymore. At the early end, there were some that had the sticker shock of several hundred, multiple hundreds. The average person has much closer to about thirty dollars uh, overage or or hundreds credit or. Uh, Okay. Now, Thank you, sir. One thing I do want to, you brought up a thought, the question I thought you were asking, I want to go ahead and address right now. You cannot game the system. Okay? There's a rumor out there that, hey, we can game it. I figured out all the houses that are like mine. I figured out that age and size and so forth, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the average for my type house driven up through by leaving the top going continuously, like, by running the faucet outside so I have a higher average. All that does is run the bill up for the community, and that's still a huge bill that's going to be charged. And I guarantee you, no one out here is smart enough to figure out every house that's in his profile, okay? So please pass on your soldiers. They cannot gain the system, try to run their bill by wasting water. That's not what we're trying to do here. We're trying to achieve better conservation, and it works when we get it down. And again, to address your point, I would agree with you. It is not fair that we build people for something that we don't intend to build people. So we'll address that. And I can't address why it's taking this long, and that's why I want to talk to you afterwards, to repair that sprinkler system. Uh, and I have no intention of charging anybody for sprinkling of the lawn, okay? We just gotta figure out, because there's not a separate meter on that faucet on the back side of the house. So I gotta figure out how we calculate what went on the lawn and what went in the home, okay? Fortunately right now, my real goal here is to repair your sprinkler system so you don't have to do that in a quicker timeline before we go into full on billing. Okay. But this will be a challenge somewhere down the road where we have a sprinkler system out and we just got to figure out what we tell the community. We don't want you to kill your grass. Okay. So there's there's another way to do this. Yeah. Sir, perhaps I didn't catch it, but how are we metering the reverse osmosis water in addition to the to the other water, or is it just combined, or do we get all the free reverse osmosis water we want? Or how does that mean? Yeah, RO water. Yeah, RO water is not metered. Yeah. yeah. Don't don't create bad habits there on the RO water, okay? <laughs> <laughs> because RO water goes away in six months. Okay. Right now, the goal here is the, uh, the new water treatment uh, plant that we have out here is going to get us from two pipe system to one pipe system in accordance with California law that we've been on a waiver for a decade for. Uh, and we're going to have, you know, the quality of water you have in RO water uh, will be will be at a higher level for all pipes on post, and RO water will just be turned off completely. But, by the way, I'll just address that uh, right now. We've got a lot of challenges with RO water. Uh, these pipes were designed to be in the ground for about five to eight years. They've been in the ground for a decade, and we're having a lot of breaks. There's been several times... Root intrusion is actually, believe it or not, uh, the biggest thing. You should see some of the pictures CH2 and Hill, the water company, shared with me. Uh, it, it looks like uh, that character in Spider-Man, uh, Octavius or whatever it is, you know, just wraps around, these roots just wrap around, they find a little bit of water that's seeping from a seam in two PVC pipes, and then they work their way in, and then it splits. And we don't know until somebody calls us and says, our water pressure is down, we're on a gravity feed system for that pipe system. It was designed to be a short-term fix, and unfortunately it's taken us a little bit longer than we originally planned to get this plant online. But this plant is going to bring us to a higher level standard for water than you have right now, but actually almost as good as sparklets, uh, basically, in every pipe that you have on this post but the gray water that's doing the, uh, the purple pipe that does sprinklers, okay? 
And so, uh, oh, by the way, uh, the main point of this plant is that right now we have about 50 years, 40 to 50 years of water left in the aquifers out here at Fort Irwin. This, uh, and to make a gallon of water, we have to consume two gallons. So it's 50% efficient. We're gonna to go to 99.6% efficient on this new plant. So for every gallon we make, we waste 0.4% of a gallon. And that's gonna extend the life on our aquifers that we have out here at Fort Irwin for another 40 to 50 years. It would cost us a billion, would be billion dollars to get water in from these uh, aquifers that are further afar. And we don't have enough money in anybody's budget for that, okay? All right, we're going to get to the things you need to know. I'll stay after if there's additional questions about water.